After Frodo, Sam, Mary and Pippin reached the inn of the Prancing Pony, the four hobbits were disheartened when they were not met by Gandalf. The halflings were extremely distraught after their troubled encounters with the Nazgul and Barrow White. After departing the Shire with the task of burdening the ring, Frodo and Sam made their way towards Bree, whilst Gandalf sought a feeling of foreboding danger, passing towards Isengard. The novelizations are slightly different. Frodo does not set out from the Shire with the ring as hastily as in the film, just as Gandalf does not make straight for Isengard. I must see the head of my order. He is both wise and powerful. Trust me, Frodo. You'll know what to do. Before taking the northern south road to reach Isengard, Gandalf and his horse were fatigued. This is when the wizard decides to stay at the Inn of the Prancing Pony, writing a letter in the hope the innkeeper will send a message to Frodo. Being a busy and forgetful man, Butterbur forgets to send the message. This error causes Frodo to be uncertain of Gandalf's intentions, beginning his journey much later than the letter Gandalf had written intended. Oh yes, I remember elderly child. Big grey beard, pointy hat. Not seen him for six months. The letter also asserts that the hobbits should trust Strider, claiming that he is a friend and he will help them. Mr. Butterbur only remembers to deliver the letter Gandalf had provided him with during the night of the halfling's stay. Although the message did reach Frodo much later than intended, it was still useful in providing the halfling's assurance in trusting Aragorn. Resting at the Prancing Pony, the wizard leaves Bree at dawn of the next morning. After Gandalf's consultation with Saruman, leading to his imprisonment on the Tower of Orthanc, which I will cover in more detail another time, Gwahir bores Gandalf to Rohan. There he meets and tames Shadowfax, and actually sets out for the Shire from Rohan, just as Frodo and Sam are preparing to depart Hobbiton for Rivendell. Reaching the Shire one week after the Halfling's departure, around the same time the Hobbits are in the Barrow Downs. Gathering as much information from Sam's father Gaffer Gamgee, Gandalf begins his hunt for the Nazgul. Following their trail back to Bree, he speaks to Mr. Butterbur, the innkeeper of the Prancing Pony, speaking late in the night. Gandalf is delighted when he learns that the Hobbits departed with Strider that morning. The wizard rests the night at the Prancing Pony, having a well night's sleep, knowing that the halflings were under the protection of Aragorn. Leaving before dawn, Gandalf picks up his hunt for the Nine. The trail eventually leads to Weathertop. This is two days after his departure from Bree. There before him were the Nazgul. Undaring to face Gandalf under the glaring sun, as the Nazgul's powers are diminished in daylight, they fled, galloping around him at night besieging the wizard on the old fortress of Amansul, battling the Nine until he had no other choice other than escape, which he did at first break of day. This confrontation proved extremely useful, dividing the servants of Sauron. Four of the Ringwraiths sought Gandalf. There are five wraiths behind you. Where the other four are, I do not know. If the Nazgul had stayed together and let Gandalf be, Aragorn would not have been able to fend off the Nine by himself, and the Nazgul would have taken the ring from Frodo. This occurred on October the 3rd, three days prior to the arrival of the Hobbits and Aragorn. In his battle with the Nine, Gandalf left a message for his allies on rock. It was his symbol, with the number 3 in Roman numerals, hoping that this would suggest to them that Gandalf was here on October the 3rd. Of course he would have left a message more transparent if he was not in a battle with the Ringwraiths. I hope you enjoyed this canon Gandalf adventure. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Lord of the Rings content. Han on there for watching and I'll see you on the next episode of Lord of the Rings Theory. Namari. Embrace the power of the ring or embrace your own destruction. Renewed shall be blamed. Round.